One of the things I often find myself wanting to do with MIDI in Studio One is select all of the instances of a particular note. Now, if you're coming from another door, you may find this a little confusing. So let me show you how. I want to select all of the instances of this C note that we can see here. Now, if you just click on the piano keyboard here for that C note, we get a preview of the note, but nothing is selected. What you need to do on PC is hold down control or on Mac, hold down command, and then click on that note. And you can see it's selected all of these instances of C here for this event. So it hasn't selected the ones over here. You can see at the top that this piano part has two separate events. If I want to select all of the instances of C for the whole piece, then I hold down control alt on PC or command option on Mac and then click on that note and it selects all of the instances of that note. Voila. <laughs> Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. That was the first of five MIDI power tips I'm gonna show you today. The second one is an absolute lifesaver. If we take a look at my piano roll here, I've got three instruments showing on it. In blue, I have the piano. In green, I have some high strings. And then in purple, I have some low strings. Let's just have a quick listen to two or three bars so you can get an idea of how this all sounds and pay particular attention to the high strings here in green. So it's playing an integral role there to the whole sound. Now what if I want to start playback from sort of, I don't know, a third of the way through that section. So I'll click at the top here to set my playhead and listen to what happens when I play. We're not hearing some of the important notes there, particularly that high string, but also the bass notes of the piano and the low uh, low string notes here. Now, the reason for that is, is that MIDI notes are triggered when the playhead crosses the beginning of the note. And because that's not happening here for some of these long notes, we're not crossing over the beginning, then they're not played. So if you've had this problem, what I want you to do is go up to the top to the Studio One menu and then go down to Options. Or you could press Control, Comma if you're on PC, Command, Comma if you're on the Mac. So we go into Options here. Make sure you're on the Advanced tab at the top. Then make sure you're on the MIDI tab down below here. Then simply select Chase Long Notes. So click on that. Then you can apply or OK like so. Select the position you want to start playing back from and then play. Again, voila. I'm going to show you two completely different ways to create strums. So I've got this acoustic guitar part here. Just have a quick listen. And some of these chords do sound a bit odd because there's no sort of strum to them. Let's apply a strum just to this first chord here. One of the things you could do is just go in and manually drag the notes, right? So we've got this ascending strum here on the guitar, sounds like this. That's okay, but it's very, very time consuming. So let's undo all of that and see how we can do it in a non-time consuming way. What I'm gonna do, and you have to follow this carefully, is select all of the notes like so, then click on the top one, and then hold down Control and Alt on PC or Command and Option on Mac, and then just drag to the side. And you can see the notes are being distributed evenly from the first note to the note that we're grabbing. So I'll drag it out a little bit like that and we get that nice strum effect there. Now, another way of doing this, which is probably less time consuming again, um, is we can undo that. Uh, if we now right click on the selected notes, yeah, we've got them all selected, right click, go to articulations, and then go down to where it says arpeggio, just click on that. Now, nothing's moved here, but if we have a listen, 
we get a kind of a strum going on there with the added bonus that if you use the score editor we'll go over there it's indicated for that chord there now a bonus tip i have for you if you're struggling with anything in studio one is to join my brand new studio one revealed facebook group i just launched it last week it's absolutely thriving loving it over there and if you join today and ask a question any stupid question at all you'll hopefully find someone within that community who has the answer for you right away please follow the link in the description down below and join me and the others over there love to see you sometimes you want to move notes around either in terms of pitch or timing so you could use your mouse i'll select these four notes here like so and then i can drag them up and down for example and that's fine, but it also may be quicker depending on what you're doing at the time and your workflow to use your keyboard. So we could, for example, use the up and down arrows to change the pitch with these notes. Okay, another thing that we can do is hold shift when we do that and they'll move in octave steps. Yeah, okay, so that may be quicker for you than using your mouse. The other thing we want to do is sometimes move them in terms of timing. Now, I've got snap turned on at the moment, and if I hold alt on my keyboard and use the left and right arrows, I can move these notes in steps uh, depending on what my quantize setting is. So I'll just hold alt on my keyboard, and I can use the uh, back arrows for example, just to move it in 16th steps or the forward arrows like so. And if you really want to have fine control and you just want to nudge things, then just turn snap off and I'll hold, I'll press N on my keyboard to turn snap off. And then I'm going to again, hold alt and then use the arrow keys. And you can see that then I can just slowly slide those notes backwards and forwards for great accuracy. I'm going to show you two completely different ways to transpose your MIDI. Now with the first method, what I'm going to do is actually select the event at the top there, okay, rather than select individual notes, although I could select individual notes. But I'm going to right click on that event and go down to musical functions, then go to transpose and click on that. This dialog opens. You can see that I can transpose by octaves here or different ways. But what I've actually done is set this up already so that it's just going to move by or be transposed by three steps upwards, three semitones. Okay. So I'll click on OK and notice when I do that all of the notes are going to shift. Okay. So this is a way of sort of permanently moving all of the notes in your piece of music so that they shift to the new position. However, another thing that you can do for the whole part, in this case it's a piano, is make sure that we've got our piano part selected up here. Then open the inspector. Now you can press F4 to do that or you can click on the I icon up here. That opens the inspector. Now go all the way down to the bottom. You may not be able to see everything that I can see here, in which case you may need to adjust this little divider here to drag things up and down and you can see there there's a transpose uh, box there so I'm just going to type uh, three in there it will do the same thing as my transposition a moment ago but you'll notice in the piano roll nothing moved so this is kind of transposing in real time if you like and that could be quite handy if you want to musically keep things intact on the piano roll there's two things I'm hoping for from you with this video first of all I'd like you to do all of the usual youtubery things like the video subscribe to the channel and if you've got something to say make sure you say it in the comments down below have you got some tips about midi that you want to share i'd love to hear from you on that all of those things help to grow small channels like this into big channels please take me up on this free offer. <laughs> the other thing I'd really like you to do is join me in that Facebook group that I mentioned earlier. The link for that is in the description down below. Now, if all of this was a little bit above your head in some ways and you need to know more about the basics of using MIDI with the piano roll, I highly recommend that you go ahead and watch this video right here. Go on, I made it for you.